In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a risk assessment matrix in Excel. Now, a risk assessment matrix is a very helpful tool to visualize the risks on your project and to quickly identify the probability and the impact that risks may have on your project. In less than five seconds, you can quickly see what are the most severe risks that your team must focus on, and this can be incredibly helpful to prevent critical schedule delays and budget issues. So I'm first going to show you how to create your master risk matrix table, and then we'll create our visualized risk assessment matrix that will automatically update whenever you add a new risk to your risk register. If you'd like to follow along with this video and create your own risk assessment matrix in Excel, download my risk log template completely for free over at alvinthepm.com slash risk log. Now on the screen, I've already pre-populated our risk log with the following columns, risk number, originator, date identified, status, risk description, impact description, and then quantitative risk evaluations for the impact, probability, and the score. I've already listed out 10 sample risks with numbers already filled in for their impact and their probability with a range from one to five. Keep in mind that the risk score is the impact multiplied by the probability that the risk may happen. So let's first create our master risk matrix in another tab. We'll be creating a five by five matrix table. So let's first number the cells in column B from five all the way down to one. In row seven, starting from column C, let's start populating the numbers from one to five as well. Now that we know where the matrix will be, let's add the outline for all of the squares by highlighting all of the cells and holding down on your left mouse button. Go to the borders button on the home tab and select all borders. Let's first title the X axis as impact. Center this by highlighting the five cells and clicking on the button merge and center in the alignment group of the home tab. Bold this and increase the font size to 24 and let's make the cells background color a dark gray color. Let's also add the Y axis title for probability and also merge and center it. After it's merged, I'll go to the orientation button to rotate the text upwards. And this just makes the graph much more visually appealing. Let's apply the same font formatting as the X axis and we're all set. The next step is to add in the risk scores for each of these cells. And we'll do that by multiplying the probability by the impact. Starting with the first cell, C3, we'll type in equal sign, dollar sign B3, multiplied by dollar sign C dollar sign eight. The first dollar sign before the letter B is used to keep the column constant when we drag the formula down. The next two dollar signs for dollar sign C dollar sign eight are used to keep this value constant when the formula is dragged down to the cells below it. We're essentially multiplying the probability of five by one. Now after we press enter, click on the cell and hover your mouse to the bottom right until it shows a plus symbol and click and hold your left mouse button downward to drag and drop the formula to the cells below it. For cell D3, type in equal sign followed by dollar sign B3 multiplied by dollar sign D dollar sign eight. Let's drag this formula down to the cells below it to auto populate the scores for the second column. So let's repeat this and do the same thing for columns E, F, and G. In your formula, make sure that you keep your impact value constant by using a dollar sign before the column and the row number, and for your probability, only using one dollar sign before the column itself. It's now time to color code our matrix using the following legend. Scores between one and four should have a green color and will correspond to a low risk. Scores between five and 12 should be yellow, corresponding to a medium risk and any score above 10 should be red, which is a high risk. Now let's highlight all the cells within our five by five matrix. Go to the button for conditional formatting on the home tab, click on it, hover over the highlight cells rules, and let's select the option for less than. Format cells that are less than five to be a green fill with dark green text. Select OK, and let's do this conditional formatting for cells which have a value between five and 12. Let's fill in these cells with a yellow fill with dark yellow text and select OK. Let's select the entire matrix and format the cells that are greater than 12 to be a light red filled with a dark red text. 
And so this master risk matrix table is a great visual indicator to show you where risk will fall based upon their score value. Any risk which has a score greater than 12 is an immediately high risk and is colored red. And this is where you should focus your team's efforts on mitigating these high impact and high severity risks. Now let's go back to our risk log. Let's color code the score column so it follows a similar coloring scheme using our legend. Let's highlight all the cells on the table by pressing Ctrl plus A and then press Ctrl plus T to create a table. Make sure that all the correct cells on the table are selected and check mark the box for my table has headers. Select OK and we'll have created our table for our risk log. So that it's easier to manipulate the data inside of Excel, select the entire table by pressing Ctrl plus A and then go to the table name field and type in risk log. So that it's easy to visualize the severity of each score, let's also apply conditional formatting to the score column using the same legend that we reviewed earlier. Highlight the cells from rows 2 to row 11 and select the conditional formatting button. Hover over Highlight Cells Rules and click on Less Than. Format the cells which are less than 5 to be filled with a green fill with dark green text. Repeat the same steps to apply conditional formatting with yellow and red colors to your score column and it should look like the following. Now you can quickly filter your high severity risks based upon their color by either red, yellow or green. This is extremely helpful when you're reviewing risks with your team and upper management and you only want to review risks which have a medium or a high score. By the way, if you're getting a lot of value out of this video, do me a favor and smash that like button for me. It truly shows your support and it helps the channel out tremendously. Now let's create our risk assessment graph which will automatically populate these risk IDs into a graph. The very first thing we'll do is insert a column for risk ID combined. We'll use the concatenate function of Excel to combine the word ID with the actual risk number. This column for risk ID will be what we eventually plot onto our graph later. Now let's highlight the data inside the columns for impact and probability. Once you've selected all the cells, click on the insert tab. And then click on the scatter plot button inside the charts group. Let's rename the chart title to be risk assessment matrix. With the chart selected, move your mouse icon to the right where you see a green plus icon and click it to access the menu for chart elements. Check mark the boxes for access titles and data labels. Before we do anything else, let's format the graph and remove the horizontal and the vertical grid lines. To do that, left click your mouse to highlight one of the grid lines and right click to open up the menu. Select Format Grid Lines and you'll see a bunch of options pop up. Underneath the line header, select the option for No Line. That way there aren't any lines visible inside of the matrix. We'll repeat this step again to remove the remaining grid lines. Now we have a blank canvas and the only thing that should be visible are your data points. Let's now format and rename both the x-axis and the y-axis titles. To do that, select the text box with your left mouse button and inside the formula bar, type in equal sign and then cell H1 so that's directly linked to this cell value. What's great about doing it this way is that the title will automatically update whenever you change this column header. Let's do the same thing to rename the vertical y-axis to be probability. When we look at the graph, we see that the data points being displayed are the actual values. Instead, what we want to show are the ID numbers. So to change it, left click any of the data points, right click your mouse button, and choose the option for Format Data Labels. Under the menu for Label Options, check mark the box for Value from Cells. For your data label range, select the cells that are containing the concatenated risk ID, which in our case is cells B2 through B11. Press OK and you'll now see the words ID in front of each label. Let's now format the way this looks by right clicking the text and selecting the option for Format Data Labels. In the right hand panel, remove the checkmark boxes for Y value and show leader lines and this should clean up your graph a little bit. 
However, there's still one area that we do have to clean up. As you can see here, some of the text is overlapping, so we'll need to reposition these around the blue data points. To do that, left click your mouse on the text and drag and drop it to the right. Do the same step for any other data points which are overlapping. You can position them any way that you want, but just make sure that they're around the data point itself. Now here comes the fun part. We're going to color in the graph with the correct color so it shows green, yellow, and red. First, left click on the inside of the graph so it selects the inside portion. And then right click to open up the menu and select Format Plot Area. A panel will open up to the right side and you'll want to go to the Fill header. Beneath it, select the option for Gradient Fill. To make our graph show green on the bottom left, yellow in the middle, and red on the top right, go to the section for Gradient Stops. Select the rightmost slider and choose the color for light green. You'll see a light green color appear on the graph on the bottom. Let's now select the second rightmost slider and choose the color for yellow. Visually, we can already see how a gradient is forming between yellow and green. Let's select the third slider and choose an orange color. To make the top area red, select the leftmost slider and choose a red color. We can see a gradient now from green to yellow to orange and to red, but we need this gradient going from the bottom left corner to the top right corner. So to do that, select the option for direction and choose the one that says linear diagonal top right to bottom left. Since the green color should occupy more on the lower side, move the sliders to the left. Play around with the sliders so that the red occupies the top right corner and it slowly transitions to orange and yellow. And once you do that, you'll end up with this graph. Alright, so it looks pretty nice so far, but we're not done yet. To make the data points stand out even more, left click on one of the blue dots. Right click to open up the menu and then select Format Data Series. On the right panel, go to the tab with the Paint Bucket and under the Marker section, choose the option for Solid Fill. Let's make the color black and under Border, let's select the color to be black as well and change the width to be 2.5 and that makes the data point visually stand out. To make the text easier to read, left click on one of the text boxes and right click to open up the menu and select Format Data Labels. Go to the header with the paint bucket and under Fill, select Solid Fill and let's choose a white color. Under Transparency, let's make it 25%. And here is the final risk assessment matrix. All the data points now show which risk ID corresponds to a high or a low probability and impact level. And it's so much easier to identify which risks are the highest severity and require the most focus on. In our example, it's risk IDs 1, 2, 5, 6, and 9. You can clean up the graph even more by bolding the titles and increasing the font size. What's really great about having this risk assessment matrix is that if you add another risk to the table, and let's say we populate it with some information here, let's say we add in an impact of 4 and a probability of 2, once we hit enter, the graph will automatically update with the location of the risk ID. Pretty neat, right? The risk assessment matrix is such a valuable tool to visually manage your project's risks. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to download the risk log file completely for free over at alvinthepm.com slash risk log so you can create your own risk assessment matrix following the steps that I've shared in this video. Now to learn more about how to create a RAID log to track your project's risks, assumptions, issues, and dependencies, watch this video next, and I'll see you in the next video.